Hi there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And for those of you who are new here, I'm Amy. I'm a full-time reseller, primarily on the Poshmark app, but I do dabble on other platforms like Facebook Marketplace, Cherish.com, and I sell locally. So today I'll be doing a ship with me video. And in these videos, I go day to day and I share the items that I am shipping out for the week. I like to talk about how much they sold for, what I paid for them, what my profit was, uh, maybe why I picked them up, if I'd pick them up again, you know, just different details to help you guys look for different types of items that you can pick up when you're out thrifting. You'll want to make sure to watch to the end because I always have really interesting items that you might not think to, to pick up when you're thrifting and it will just kind of expand the options for things for you to make money on. Okay, so the first item is pretty exciting. It is a Gucci belt. Now I have had this belt for over two years because I thrifted it at the Goodwill for $3. And I wasn't sure if it was real. And I don't know if I was just too lazy or, well, I wouldn't call it lazy, I was too cheap. Maybe I didn't wanna pay the fee to have it authenticated. And I just finally decided uh, that I needed to get it done so that I could sell it. And I had another vintage Gucci belt uh, that I wanted to sell and a Gucci bag. So I went ahead and just had them all authenticated and they all came back authentic and I thrifted them all. Oh my gosh, I was so thrilled. So I listed this only maybe a couple of weeks ago. And if you watched last week's video, I sold the other vintage Gucci belt as well. And I had had that for a few years. I had worn it and uh, then decided I wasn't getting enough wear out of it out of it for how valuable it was. So anyways, I listed this for $329, which was on the very high end for comps. And I had lots of likes. I'd sent out multiple offers and this buyer offered me $200. After looking at uh, sold comps, on different plat platforms, it looked like that was really in the range for what you could get for this belt. And it seemed like the one with the navy blue and red was a lot less popular than the green and red one. So I decided to just accept the $200 because like I said, I had only paid $3 for this at an estate sale. Uh, plus the authentication fee. Now I got a deal and I only had to pay $5 for the authentication. So let's see, I didn't include that. So that means I paid $8 and um, after Poshmark fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $152. I'm super excited. You know, I might've been able to get a little bit more for this if I had of waited and waited, but I've just been in the mood to move more items. I have a lot of inventory and I thought that this was a fair offer based on costs. Okay, so I am, I wrapped that in tissue paper, then I'm gonna wrap it in a layer of this plastic. I get a lot of questions on this plastic sheet and all it is, is it's a giant roll of plastic garment bags like you would get when you have your dry cleaning done. And they're long and I fold them in half and cut them down the middle to reduce waste. And then I just wrap the items in it. Now I picked mine up at an estate sale, but you can get something similar on Amazon. And I tried it out if you just search plastic garment bag, plastic dry cleaner garment bag roll. There are some that come up on Amazon. They're about $60 for the roll, but I think it came out to be like 10 or 15 cents a piece 
if you order the roll. I paid $5 for my roll of like 500. So um, it's up to you if you wanna do that. You know, there's other things like uh, craft paper and whatnot that you can use to wrap your items. And be sure to keep your eyes out when you're out thrifting at an estate and at estate sales for packaging and things that you can use for your business because oftentimes it's a lot cheaper at the sales and it's kind of a form of recycling or reusing. It, it definitely reduces waste because you're not ordering new. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Sorry for that, but hopefully um, it will help you out. Looks like I might need to get a bigger box for that. But I am super excited about that sale. The next item is another belt. And for all my loyal subscribers, I'm sure you're tired of death, tired to death of hearing me talk about belts. But I love buying belts. Um, I pick them up if they, I try and like to keep my cost of goods $3 and under, but sometimes I pay up if it is an interesting or unique belt or just if I like it. So this belt I picked up for $2 and I had it listed for $39, which is typically what I list my belts at unless they are a designer name brand or um, just really unique. And let's see. I can't remember if this was an offer from a buyer or if I sent out offers, but it sold for $34. Like I said, my cost of goods was $2. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $22.52. I'm happy with that. I like to turn and burn belts and move them out and move new ones in. I have tons of belts listed, so that is why I sell them so often. And I'm constantly buying and adding new belts. And so I think that draws attention to my closet for that category and helps with my sales for it. I'm not sure it could just be because I have so many available. Okay, the next item is also another pretty exciting sale. Oops, part of my pile just fell down here. So this is a vintage suede coat with a wool Sherpa lining in it. And I picked this up at an estate sale. It kind of has a bomber style uh, kind of 70s, 80s style. And, you know, one thing to remember is always go back through those closets when you're at estate sales, even if you've seen other resellers in there, because I got to the closet after everyone else, and this was still in there. And um, clothes are only a dollar at this estate sale. So I grabbed it. And I was tempted to keep it for myself because it's really cute, but I just decided to list it and I listed it for $92 and it sold within about 24 hours for full price. And the buyer has been commenting and she's super excited to get it. So that makes me happy that someone who really likes it is going to get it and treasure it. I just picked up another similar one on a recent thrift trip. So hopefully I do, it doesn't have the Sherpa lining, but hopefully I do as well with it. So like I said, it sold for $92. I paid a dollar for it. So after posh fees, that made my profit $72.60. Oh, I realized I forgot to put that, a thank you sticker on those two belts, but I will go ahead and do that off camera. So I also like to use a little thank you sticker. I got these on Amazon. There's tons of options for these. I just liked the holographic look uh, for this. For my coats, I like to use this larger box number seven. It's kind of a cube shape. And it just has plenty of room so that the coat fits tightly, but it's not too squished in there. Okay, the next item, another vintage item. I really love buying and selling vintage. 
And one of the reasons is because I think it's fun, but also there is less competition for one item. So theoretically you can uh, price your items at more and potentially get more because nobody else on Poshmark had this exact dress. So, you know, they can't say, well, I'm gonna go there and pay $20 for it. This is the only one. And I really liked this kind of, this very 60s styling. And then a key word for these kind of 60s prints is I put psychedelic in there. And that really seems to get people's attention. This is kind of a mid-length fit and flare. It's, I believe it's polyester. There's no tags in it. So it could have been a handmade piece. I had this listed, I think as high as $89 and I have had it listed for quite some time. I think the buyer, I think it was a buyer offer. She offered me $63 and I decided to go ahead and accept that because I had paid just $4.99 for this at the Goodwill. And I'd had it listed for a little, little bit of time. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $45.40. I'm very happy with that type of profit. Just means that I have to list and ship less items. Oh, another tip uh, for vintage. So this did not have a size tag, a fabric contact, content tag, or a brand tag. So for brand on vintage, most of the time I will just list it under vintage brand. Poshmark has a specific pre-filled brand for vintage and people will follow that just like they would Patagonia or um, Ann Taylor Loft or whatever. So I like to do that. Uh, for fabric content, I will specifically say no fabric content label, but feels like polyester or polyester blend. That way I'm not guaranteeing it, but I'm giving them an idea of what I think the fabric feels like. And then the third thing for sizing is, I'll also put no size tag, please refer to measurements for best fit estimation. But then oftentimes I'll list it in multiple sizes uh, because that helps me get more exposure for the item. So for this, I listed it in size medium and size large because, uh, let's see, the measurements were kind of in between. It was roomy in the waist and hips and a little bit in between um, medium and large in the chest. So um, those are just some tips to help your vintage items get more exposure. And of course, you know, you do things how you want to do, but that has what, uh, is what has worked for me in the past. Okay. The next item is this men's button top sweater. And this is by Polo Ralph Lauren. The main reason I picked this up is because it is a wool, is it all wool? I can't remember. Oh, merino wool and Angora rabbit hair. So that's the main reason I picked it up because it was priced up a little bit. It was priced at $5.99 at the Goodwill, but it's in beautiful condition. It only has a little bit of peeling and I'm sure this had a really high retail to begin with. I think I started out having this listed at $69 and a buyer offered me 50. I thought that was reasonable, so I accepted. So after posh fees, that made my profit $34. Very respectable profit. It did take a bit for this to sell. I think I listed it at the end of last winter. So of course it kind of sat through the summer, but I am happy for the amount it sold for. And this buyer will get a very nice quality piece for a reasonable price. I apologize if the lighting's changing in here at all. I do have some overhead lights on today because it's very overcast outside and it seems like one of the lights is flickering. So hopefully that doesn't bother you guys too much. 
Okay, let's see. The next item is another vintage item. And I picked this up at the Goodwill bins. It is a fleece with bald eagles on it. And it is by Black Diamond. This particular one is a size 2X. Now I do pick up these fleeces when I see them, particularly like the wolf ones will do really well. People like this kind of look. Um, younger people because it has a vintage vibe and then older people because it was in style, you know, when they were younger. So I do pretty well with these. I bought this at the bins, so I only paid about $2 for it. And I think I had it listed for 55. I can't remember exactly, but it sold for $44, which I'm happy with. I have gotten a little bit higher prices in the past, but it could have been the size of this or the subject matter that wasn't quite as popular. Um, at any rate, I thought $44 was a good price to sell it for. So after posh fees, that made my profit $30.52. Again, I'm very happy with that. And this is an interesting item that you are not going to see everywhere else. And I think I just had this listed for maybe two months. So it didn't sell super quick, but also it didn't sit forever or anything. Okay, let's see, I do have a big box for this. And the next sale is a bundle and it is uh, one of my subscribers. Thank you so much, Madeline. I really appreciate you supporting my channel and my closet. And please don't feel obligated to buy things from me, even though I do really appreciate it. Um, you know, I'm, I am, I'm here to share my knowledge and I do, uh, I just got monetized on YouTube. So I do make a little bit from making these videos, not a whole bunch, but enough to definitely make it worth my time to, to do this. At any rate, I really appreciate, um, the support Madeline. So this uh, was a bundle of two items. The first item, can you see those? It's a little pair of earrings. They kind of look like tree branches with little um, rhinestones. And I had these priced at $10. She added these and these bangle bracelets to a bundle and I have an automatic 15% off discount for uh, two or more items. So she got 15% off. So the total was $17. I didn't pay anything for either of these items. They were given to me by a friend and they had been listed for quite some time. I find I don't do very well with lower dollar items. Um, just I think because of the shipping. So a $10 item, then they have to pay $7 shipping. So also as a thank you for being a subscriber, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in this costume jewelry silver necklace. Hopefully she likes it uh, or she can re-gift it and find someone who does like it. And my videos are filmed, let's see. I film my videos a couple weeks in advance. Um, I like to have at least two videos ahead of time. So if I get sick or I wanna go on vacation, I have some ready to upload. So she will have gotten this and seen her little surprise before the video comes out. So I won't be spoiling any little surprise. Okay, so did I say that that made my profit $13.60 after Poshmark fees? Like I've said before, every little bit counts. And if someone gives me an item and I have time to 
get it listed. I definitely will, even if it's a little bit lower dollar item. I was having my brother-in-law uh, photograph for me. And when I was training him, I had him photograph and list some of these lower dollar items. Just so if something went wrong or the photos weren't that great, uh, it was on a lower dollar item and not a high dollar item. Anyways, I greatly appreciate you supporting me in my channel and my business. So I hope you love all of these. Okay, well that's um, all I have for today, but I will be back in a couple tomorrow or a couple days to share what else I ship out. I will see you then. Hi there, it's another day and I have some more goodies to ship out. The first item is sort of an experiment. It is this red midi length puffer coat and it is by Calvin Klein. So that's what the experiment is. I don't typically pick up Calvin Klein just because I feel like I see it at Ross and TJ Maxx. But this was $6 at a thrift store. The quality is really nice. And I loved this beautiful red scarlet color. It was marked for $6, so I thought, that's reasonable, you know, even if I can only get 30 bucks for it or something, I'll still make a profit. Or if comps are really low, it was my size and I thought I'll just keep it. But I looked around at some comps and decided to price it at $95. So typically I, you know, I pass on Calvin Klein because you know you see it at Ross and TJ Maxx and so to me that kind of devalues it in my eyes or I assume other people see it there and don't think it has very good value. So I got an offer, did I say I listed it for $95 and I listed it less than two weeks ago and I got an offer for $79 which I think is great for Calvin Klein. So of course I accepted that. Um, what do you guys think? Do you guys normally pick up Calvin Klein? Have I been missing out? I had only picked it up one other time in the past and it was because it was very affordably priced. It was like $4 and it was this beautiful long wool coat. And I thought this has got to have some value. And I ended up selling that one for almost $100, I think 95. So let me know in the comments down below, do Calvin Klein coats or dresses? Other Calvin Klein items do good for you. Maybe I've been missing out. Well, I mean, we'll have to see. I might start experimenting more with this if the price is low at the thrift store. So after my cost of goods and posh fees, that made my profit $57.20. That is awesome. You know, based on that, I would definitely want to pick up Calvin Klein again. Did I just get lucky? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, if you guys are enjoying my videos, I would so appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. When you ring the bell, it'll notify you when I upload new videos. Also, if you like this video, if you could give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below, all those things really help me out. Number one, they help encourage me. Number two, they help my channel grow. And number three, they uh, tell YouTube that people like my videos. And so YouTube boosts my videos in the, the search and the, the feed so that more people are exposed to my videos and that in turn helps me grow. Okay, thanks. I really appreciate it. Okay, the next item wasn't listed for too long either. And if you watch one of my recent uh, Goodwill Bins thrift hauls, this is a vintage, probably 80s, 90s snowsuit. Now I do pretty well with these. I've sold them for as much as $129 in the past. This one I listed lower because it had uh, some wear in the knees, one of the pockets, the zipper pull was missing, and there was no size tag in it. So I listed it for $49 and it was a full price sale. Now let's 
fingers crossed that I don't get this returned because I did put in my description that I would accept a return because there was no size mark. And the reason I did that on this item, I don't typically do that, but I couldn't determine if this was like a women's petite size or if it was like a junior size. I can't really tell exactly what the sizing is. So for that price, I just didn't feel like it was fair to make someone keep it if it didn't fit. And it's really hard to get accurate measurements on something like this. So fingers crossed it fits her and um, that she doesn't return it because I sure would like to just move this out. So like I said, I picked this up at the bins. So I paid maybe three, two or three dollars for it. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $37.20. I'm not gonna complain about that at all. I'd recommend that you pick up these uh, ski snowsuits if you see them. And, you know, really check comps if you do, because some of the brands and styles are more desirable than others, and you can get a couple hundred dollars for certain brands and styles. Okay, the next item is this reversible Brighton belt. And can you see that? It swivels from brown to black. Now it's funny, just a couple of days ago, somebody asked me in the comments what I think about picking up Brighton belts. And I told them that I don't typically, or that I haven't had very good luck in the past with Brighton belts. And that is true. But this, I was out shopping and it was only a dollar. And because it was reversible, I thought I'd pick it up. It did have pretty heavy wear and distressing or noticeable wear and distressing on it. And I did note that in the description and I listed it for $25 and it sold in like an hour of being listed. Well, on offer, the buyer made me an offer for $20. So maybe I just haven't been pricing the Brighton belts right and they need to be priced lower. Maybe I just got lucky. But um, I can't remember who it was that asked me, but hopefully you're watching this and you'll see that, you know, maybe I was wrong. Maybe you should pick up uh, Brighton belts. Just keep them, your cost of goods very low, like a dollar or two dollars. That way, you know, if you have to take a low offer or reduce the price, you are not, you know, out money or stuck with money out. So that's it for today. It's been a little slow the last couple of days. I'm not sure why, but it's okay. I had a good weekend and hopefully the next few days will uh, be good also. So I'll see you then. Hi there, it's another day and I've got some more goodies to ship out. I have one particularly exciting sale. So let's get to it. It is this vintage kind of cream and black tapestry vintage, I already said vintage, <laughs> women's coat. It's fur trimmed and it is by uh, Betty Rose, which as far as I know, isn't necessarily a notable or important designer, but I could be wrong because I listed this and it sold in less than 24 hours for full price and I listed it at $229. Ah, I'm so excited. I picked this up at the bins. So my average cost of goods for that haul was $1.65. Can you guys believe it? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So it's possible that I underpriced this and that's why it sold so quickly. It's also possible I just um, was in the right place at the right time or had the right item at the right time. Um, it was a guest buyer. So I assume that uh, they were searching for something similar on Google and they came over to Poshmark 
and open an account just to buy this item. So knock on wood, everything goes good. Um, the coat was in nice vintage condition considering it is 60 plus years old. Uh, there was some yellowing, a little discoloration to the tapestry, and it had a little bit of a vintage closet smell. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, kind of musty. Um, but I did include all of that in this description. There is no size tag. And I believe that this fur is genuine, but I am not certain. I included that in the listing, and I included a whole bunch of measurements. Uh, length, chest, waist, hips, shoulders, and sleeve length. I like to do as many measurements on vintage items, uh, especially when they don't have a size mark so that people know what they're getting. I think vintage buyers really appreciate all of the extra details and specifics so they really know. Um, I used keywords like tapestry, uh, fur trimmed, collar, um, midi, 60s, retro, vintage, floral. I think it's possible I put Jackie O or Marilyn or something in there, um, but I'm just super excited. So I'm having trouble getting this folded up sitting down, so I'm going to finish packaging it up off camera. But after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $181.20. Woo! I'm so excited. And did I say it sold in less than 24 hours? I bought it a few months ago, but I was kind of waiting for winter to come, and I just listed it, and bam, it sold. So if you guys know something about this and I underpriced it, please let me know in the comments so we can all learn for the future. Um, now, one thing I will say about these fur trimmed coats, don't rush out and just buy pay up for them because I have a couple others that have been sitting in my closet for forever. So not all of them are valuable like that and um, not all of them will sell quickly. So be sure to, to uh, look at comps and do your research before you pick them up, especially if you're gonna pay up. I mean, if you're gonna pick them up at the bins, then yeah, do it and try it out. Okay, the next item is this vintage rhinestone brooch. Now this is marked Kramer. I don't think I'll be able to get that to focus to show that, but Kramer is a good jewelry brand. You want to keep your eyes out for this. You can often get a little bit higher prices for this brand. I had it listed for $69 and I sent out 10% off offers to likers. The buyer added it to a bundle and asked me if I would accept 50 with discounted shipping. And I had paid just $2 for this at an estate sale, so I said yes. I told her she could either uh, decline my offer and I would send her another offer, or she could counter offer me $48 and that would come out to the same as 50 with discounted shipping. So she counter offered me 48 and I accepted. So that made my profit $36.40. I'm very happy with that. Brooches aren't always a home run. Oftentimes they will sit around and you only you know, sell them for $10 or $15, but certain brands and styles can be uh, desirable to people. Uh, the Nurse Flipper on YouTube has some really great videos about brooches. I would recommend you watch those. Um, also, you can just type in like vintage brooch in eBay search and then look at sold listings. That's one of the ways that I learn. When I get an item, I just do about five minutes of research on it. If it looks promising, then I will continue to do more research. And oftentimes I'll learn about other items as I'm researching. So. That's, I mean, that's really the only tip that I can give you is that it just takes time to 
look at things and touch them and learn to, you know, figure out what has more value than other items. Okay, so the next item, did I say, yeah, I said what my profit was on that. The next item is this kind of funky, cool men's vest. And I picked this up just because of the styling. It kind of had a post-apocalyptic post look to it. I think that it is um, has something to do with uh, carrying guns and stuff like that. And I picked it up more for style. It didn't end up doing as well as I anticipated. I paid $4 for it. And I had it listed for $39.00. And it had been listed for quite quite a while. And I got a buyer who asked me if I would take $25 for it. Actually, he asked me what my lowest price was and I was busy and didn't respond right away. So he offered me uh, $25. I thought that was fair, even though it was less than I was hoping to get. Um, I just hadn't really had any action with this. Maybe I had the wrong keywords. Anyways, he seems super excited to get it and I can, you know, move it along and get something else to list for sell, sale. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $16. A little bit less than what I typically like to do, but it's gone. So I am excited about that. Okay, that is all for this week. I so appreciate you guys continuing to watch. Um, I've gotten some really kind and wonderful com comments and it just really warms my heart that there are so many nice people out there uh, watching and learning and all the things. So if you are enjoying my videos, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button, join our little family or friend circle here. Um, there's a lot of really great people and we're all here to learn and share. Also, if you like this video, if you could give it a thumbs up and comment down below, all those things really help me out. They tell YouTube that people like my videos and so YouTube suggests my videos to more people and that encourages me and helps me grow. Okay, thanks again for watching and I will see you next week.